Hello everyone, so I am back again with this video where we are going to solve the question from the operating system. The question is about context switch in the CPU scheduling. The question is asked in the year 2006 and here we just have to count the number of times context switch will take place while you are performing the CPU scheduling over these three process P1, P2, P3. So here the question is how many context switches are needed if operating system uses SRTF shortest remaining time first algorithm, do not count the context switch at the time zero and at the end because we know when we begin the CPU scheduling, we just have only one process to just load in the CPU, okay, in the running queue. And at the end also, when the process, last process terminates, there is saving of the only one process. So the context switch does not take place at the beginning and at the end. Here are the data for the question. Three process P1, P2, P3 are there whose respective arrival and the burst time is given. So here we just have to perform a CPU scheduling. Uh, so let's begin. Here I'm making the GAN chat over the time zero for the CPU. And the algorithm is SRTF as given in the question. And I hope you all remember we have done a lot of questions about SRTF. You can just go in the playlist and check it out if you don't know the algorithm yet before we start let me just tell you what a context switch is as you all must have heard this term multiple times in all my videos in fact we have discussed this very much in detail when we discuss the cpu schedulers and the dispatcher and the and the uh, state transition diagram so context switch is something whenever a process is running in the uh, on the on the cpu and some other process comes in the ready queue which is on priority or there is a timeout uh, due to the round robin schedule algorithm. So the running process has to go back and sit in the ready queue and the selected process from the ready queue has to come and start running. So the PCB of the running process has to be saved and the PCB of the new coming process has to be loaded. So this saving PCB and loading PCB job is nothing but in the context switch pcb process control block this context switch of a process okay so sorry the context of a process so that's why context switch because we are switching the context of two process one is getting saved the another is getting loaded and this job is done by the dispatcher which is a C, uh, operating system process so that's that's uh, that's a moment uh, that you have to count that how many times you are switching the process so this was about the theoretical concept now let's apply that uh, so we have three process p1 p2 p3 p1 arriving at time zero so at time zero we have process p1 so let's schedule that okay and it needs 10 burst so uh, the next time for me is at time two until two there is no other process so i would blindly schedule it for until two now at the time two I'm going to see because this has become 8 now and this is 20, this is 30. So because the scheduling algorithm says shortest remaining time first, whichever process has the shorter time, she rule that first. So out of the three, you can easily see 8, 20 and 30, which is a shorter, of course, 8. So the P1 is going to continue. Now everyone, because for your understanding, I'm showing it in two time, but it is because the same process is continuing, so we cannot say that this is a context switch. In fact, now I can easily remove this. Okay, I can, in fact, not only this, I will just take off this part also and I would say, all right, so here until 10, my P1 is running. Okay, now P1 is running and it got off. Then comes the next process, which is smaller. So by the time 10, I just have... I have both the process P2 and P3, the times are 20 and 30, so this is done, this is 0, so this is done. Now out of 20 and 30 which is smaller, P2 is smaller, right, 20 is smaller. So I am going to put my P2 here, which is going to run for 20 burst, so that becomes 10 plus 20, 30. And the next and the last process to run is P3, which needs how much, 30, so 30 plus 30 is 60, so this is how the CPU scheduling is going to take place. Now everyone just focus here. It's quite simple. Now any one of you can say how many context switches. So here when we are going from P1 to P2, this is a context switch. When you are going from P2 to P3, this is a context 
switch. Here you save the PCB of P1 and you load the PCB of P2. At this moment you save the PCB of P2 and load the PCB of P3. So we have 1 and 2. Okay, so this one is dried out since we have not done any video for a long time. Right? So we have 1 and 2. So we have 2 context switches. Okay, so the answer becomes option B that we have two context switches and it is clearly mentioned in the question and you also understand that at the time zero we just have one process and at the end also we just have one process so that is not at all considered as a context switch because that is just simple saving and the loading right this is just the saving and this is just the loading the answer for this question becomes option b two context switches are taken place see you again in the next video till then bye bye